This is the last in a series of videos on the Swiss Soldier knife because we've come to the 2008 model, which is the model that's currently in production. It began production in 2008, about seven years ago. And just like the 1961 model was a uh, quantum leap forward from the 1951 model, the 2008 model is, is another big step forward and a big modernization in the design of the knife and the technology and the materials used. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice about it um, is it's bigger and it's heavier. It comes at 111 millimeters. That's the biggest soldier knife ever and weighs 131 grams. It has a new set of uh, uh, tool set and I'll show you that in a minute. But it's been kind of a controversial knife from the beginning. Um, the Swiss Army put the design and production of this knife out for bid, uh, you know, bid for proposal globally. And that caused a lot of consternation with the Swiss because they feared that perhaps a company from Germany or America or gosh forbid even China might be making, you know, their icon iconic Swiss soldier knife. But lo and behold, uh, Victorinox won the contract. Uh, no big surprise there. And Victorinox is the only manufacturer of this model uh, because, you know, they bought Wanger uh, back in 2005 when Wanger ran into financial uh, difficulties. The first thing you'll notice about this knife is the uh, contoured synthetic scales. It's kind of a uh, composite, a, a dual composite handle. You've got nylon and then some type of non-slip uh, polymer uh, here are these inserts and then around the edge. So those feel kind of almost, they're hard, but they feel almost kind of rubbery, whereas the olive drab nylon is, is just hard and slick, slightly textured, kind of matted. Um, it also has a ring, which is the first for a soldier knife, and I don't really know what you would do with that. Um, I can't see hanging this off your keychain or something. It's, uh, it's kind of big for a pocket, really. But uh, it would be useful, I think, tying a, a lanyard or a, a P-cord or something, and you could tie it to your belt so you wouldn't lose the knife. Uh, you'll notice that they've retained the Swiss cross in the handle. It's, it's actually formed or pressed into the nylon in this model, which is nice, so that will never rub off. Uh, and then let's take a look at the main blade. Uh, they've, this is a one-hand opener. And you've got this spider co type of hole here uh, built into the spine of the blade. And once you open it, you'll notice you know, it's larger than in the past. But also, here's another little controversial thing. It's serrated, but it's not serrated toward the back edge. The front two-thirds are serrated. And I don't know if you would call that a, a drop point blade or a spear point blade. It looks almost just like a spear point blade you know, if you were to take out this spine with the uh, one hand opener on it. But they've also retained the practice of putting the two-digit date stamp at the shank of the blade. So you can see this one was produced in uh, 1913. The uh, manufacturer's stamping is no longer here at the bottom, but they've moved it to the spine of the blade, and now it just simply says Victorinox Swiss Made. And take a look at the you know, really pretty mirror-like finish uh, on this blade. Uh, all the tools on this knife are like that. They're all stone washed. Victorinox puts all their parts, blades, all the, the parts, in this big rotating bubbling vat of ceramic pellets and polishing compound. And it goes around in there for, I don't know how many hours or days, but when it comes out, they're, they're beautiful like that. I don't know when they started doing that with all of their tools. I know on this 61 model I have here, the blade is like that. It's a 94. The blade is stone washed like that. But the other tools, they, they seem to have, uh, you know, that, that ground um, polish to them. So it's a little, you can see the stri striations there. It's a little different. But anyway, back to the 2008 model. Let's take a look at the other. Oh, one other thing about the blade, and this drives me crazy, is that it's a, it's a locking blade. It's got a liner lock but it's a left-handed liner lock. So I can't, there's absolutely no way I can, being a right-handed guy, I can close that with one hand. Now if I was left-handed, you know, I could press that liner lock over and close that knife. But, you know, being right-handed, I'm kind of out of luck. Um, 
I've heard tell that there's there are more left-handed people in Switzerland than right-handed people. I don't know if that's true or not. If it is, then this would make sense. So let's take a look at some of the other tools. Can opener doesn't really change from the 61 model. It's exactly the same. It's got the cap lifter. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, it's got the screwdriver here at the end, small screwdriver, and. Um, you know, it looks kind of small, actually, uh, undersized for this size knife now. The screwdriver has gotten bigger. It's, it's much bigger. They've upped up the size of the screwdriver. You can get that in there and, and get a comparison. And again, you got that, that beautiful stone washing on all the tools. Um, the can opener retains the cap lifter and the wire bender. It's got that 90 degree indent, so it's got that stop position right there. And when you open it 180 degrees, you find that this is new. It also has a liner lock. You activate it by pressing right there. So you could really get aggressive with the screwdriver scraping or working with that fear of it closing on your hand. And then here in the front, one other surprise. This is a first for the soldier knife. Hidden in here is this baby. Quite a large saw. I don't know how they got that long of a saw in this knife, but they did. And it's a pretty aggressive um, you know, double tooth saw. It, it'll really cut through things pretty quickly. And I like the way it's canted. I don't know if you can see that. The way it's angled. It really makes it easy to get in and work on something. I've used it and it really is pretty effective. And then back tools. That's new for a soldier knife. Get that in focus for you. The first one I find really not too useful. It's the Phillips head screwdriver. And uh, the reason I say that is on the back position like that, you know, unless that screw is just on some flat surface with nothing around it, you're not going to be able to get in to any tight spots down in machinery or in a corner or something and loosen or tighten a screw with this handle in the way. I mean, you'd be impeded. So I, I don't know how effective that is, but there it is. And then on the other side you have They've, uh, I'm sorry, indents over there. They've kept the awl. It's sharpened, but does not have a, 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 a sewing hole or place to, to thread cord. So that's your tool set. And again, it's a, it's a great knife. Uh, it feels good in the hand. You know, it's heavier and, and more substantial. This really was a, a pretty uh, uh, dainty a uh, lightweight knife for field use in the military. And so um, uh, the Swiss have, have moved to this, and I think that's a good move. Okay, well, that's really all I need to say about this knife. Um, I like it. Uh, again, it's a big departure. It's a little different. takes a little getting used to. But, um, you know, I think that, again, you're just going to see more improvements moving forward as they continue to evolve this knife. And that brings us to the end of that series. Um, be sure to check out my other videos on the Swiss Soldier Knife. I just put up a, a fun one about two minutes on the 1890 model. I didn't actually have an 1890 uh, knife to show you physically, but I got some nice pictures and things off the internet. Put together a nice little video on that. So thanks for watching, and have fun collecting.